Hi guys, we're going to uh, record uh, section 23.4 and uh, onwards. Um, set timer for 45 minutes. So let's, uh, let's get started. Section 23.4, we're going to be talking about eddy currents and magnetic damping. Um, okay, so just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, an eddy current is going to um, develop because of the motional EMF. Okay, so we're gonna go through and talk about what motional EMF is again, but what that eddy current is, is just the current that's gonna flow through this wire. Okay, we didn't call it an eddy current before when I was talking about it. Um, I just called it a current flowing through the wire. And that's uh, fabulous. Um, it works well. Um, oh, gosh, I want to set my timer. And I thought I set my timer for a good long time. Okay, so... Um, In, um, so we've got these wires, uh, this wire that's inside the B field, and uh, it's moving with respect to the B field. And we'll talk about the different ways that it can move. But what if the wire wasn't a wire? What if it was a solid plate? Okay, and it's moving into and out of a magnetic field. Um, a region of magnetic field like this. So here's our field region and uh, the plate moves in and out. Well, what's gonna happen in the plate? Okay, we're gonna get some kind of current and current uh, all over the plate, all right? So um, it's a eddy current, okay? So let's get back to um, and I essentially I went through this uh, in class with you, but we're going to do it again just real quick so we can uh, firm up what it was that we were talking about. So motional EMF. Where does motional EMF come from? The fact that Faraday's law right here, this Faraday's law is... Um, true, right? And if we wanted to see the negative sign, we could just take the absolute value off it and uh, we'd have a negative sign. So that's a true thing. So, but the key, all of the key in this Faraday's law is right here. Okay. So where does this delta phi stem from? Right? Where does the delta phi stem from? So, uh, okay. So delta phi could come about because we're changing the area as the conductor moves, or we could be changing the angle between the normal vector, uh, the normal vector, let's say, is there. That's the area vector and um, the B field. So there's an angle between the normal vector and the B field. We could be changing that. Or the B field could be moving relative to the conductor. Um, those are three different ways that motional EMF can occur. Um, there's also the combinations, right? So let's talk about that just real quick. So technically what we're doing is we have this delta for all of these things. So it could be one, two, or three that occur, but it could also be a combination of them, okay? So we could have delta B happening and delta theta happening, both, or all three of them, delta A, 
delta theta and delta b could all be happening. Um, so don't worry about this. Don't worry. We're going to keep it simple. Um, and we're just going to use one, two, or three, okay? Um, you can, you'll either be dealing with this one or this one or this one. However, you need to know that they could all be happening, okay? So that leads us to our motional EMF because each of those is going to change our phi, our flux through okay magnetic flux through a certain region all right and that region has a area a okay so we've got n is the number of coils or loops just like before t is your time and uh, the change in magnetic flux is your delta phi so far so good so all we've done is rehash what we've did in class. So when motional EMF causes a current to flow, it causes that current to flow through a conductor. It's called an eddy current. So um, I'm going to say that there are eddy currents that happen here. Okay, I'm going to put a little arrow on it until we figure out which direction that eddy current is flowing. They get produced because of the mechanical energy that is going into the system. So there's um, kinetic energy around. And that kinetic energy, I'll just put a little kinetic energy here, can be stripped away from the system by friction. Okay, so friction is, is sneaking its head in there, right? This is an entropic situation and it's gonna sneak its head in there and it's gonna try and, and uh, remove energy from the system. So it's not just throwing out uh, energy as heat, it's gonna throw out energy in terms of uh, this, this um, current, this eddy current, and that eddy current will also generate its own heat too. Okay, so um, entropy is very clever at uh, removing uh, energy from a system. So, um, okay, so let's see, what do we want to do here? Um, let's just figure out if we've got this, um, if we've got this, velocity for this plate, it's a plate of metal, and the plate of metal has moved into this region of a magnetic field. Um, it's moved into that region. As it's moving in, so when we're on this side, and the plate is moving into the field, which way, which direction is the current going to go? Okay, so it's moving into that field. It's an entire plate, but we're gonna just basically say that the current, uh, and technically um, the current will want to uh, travel on the outside uh, as much as possible on the, ar around the rim of our plate, but uh, Let's just see which way that um, current is going to go. So our plate is entering in with this VA, okay? And gradually the area is getting bigger. So that means that the magnetic flux is increasing. And the magnetic flux comes from the fact that the B field is pointing into the page. So the B field is already pointing into the page. So we're going to generate a current that fights an increasing into the page B field, which means that it wants to come out of the page. So our magnetic field that is being generated, our EMF field, wants to oppose that. Okay, so we're talking about Lenz's law. It's going to oppose it. Well, how do we oppose 
um, that and have a current flow. So inside here, this thing is going to do this. So the current that has to flow, in order for that to happen, you put your uh, fingers along the B field generated, the motional B field. Induced. I want to use the word induced. This is our induced B field. There's the static B field. Okay. Um, in our case, static. Sometimes it changes, but for now, we're just saying we have a B field static, and then we have an induced. Okay. And our induced magnetic field is going to come from the current that flows in this plate. And it's going to want to oppose the already increasing B field that is pointing into the page. So that means our B field, our induced B field, is going to be uh, pointing out of the page. Now, how do we get a current to point out of the page? So we use our right hand rule. So we put our fingers toward our faces out of the page and we notice that our thumb, if we're using our right hand, which you need to do <laughs> if you're using the right hand rule, you want to have your right hand. Um, so our fingers point up, our thumb points um, on the outside, our thumb should be pointing in this direction. Okay, in fact, uh, I don't want to use blue. I think I want to use green for the current. So your thumb should be pointing this way. Um, if you were to, to turn everything around, rotate your arm so that your fingers point up at you on the inside here, then your thumb will actually be pointing down. So we can get a sense in every single direction that our current is actually going to flow counterclockwise. So CCW for current. Direction. Okay, so that's our current direction in the counterclockwise way. Okay, once it's in the middle, once it's in this region, I'm going to erase this guy. Once it's in the middle, what kind of a um, what kind of a uh, current are we going to have? We have a static B field. We don't have any change in area. We've got no change between the normal of the um, area and the B field. So we've got no change at all. So are we going to have any current on our plate? No. So in this region, no current. Now we're going to step out. It's going to go out of that region. And let's, let's get this stuff out of our way. Still with the same velocity. Um, but now, okay, listen. This is, listen carefully. The magnetic flux is declining. And it's from a static B field. So the magnetic flux is declining in static B field. That means, uh, let's... Let's make our new B field have to add to it because we want to oppose that declining. So it's opposing the declination of the flux through the B field. All right, so it has to increase. So in order for us to increase, 
which way is our current going to flow? So we put our thumb and our all the um, our fingers along the B field. Our thumb points in the direction of the current flow. All right. So that's that's what happens. Um, our eddies get produced um, in this way, okay? So um, only when there's a, a delta phi. It doesn't happen if there, uh, there has to be delta phi for current. Uh, we don't want to call it just straight current. We want to call it an eddy current. Okay, so I think I think that does a pretty good job. Now in the book, there's figure uh, 23.13. That's a great figure. Um, and it shows the uh, plate uh, moving from side to side. Um, 23.14. 23.14. Uh, kind of, uh, they all do the same, the same thing. Okay. So, uh, you can see it now. Um, where does that come from? Did we talk about the force of Force due to a magnetic field. Yeah, we sure did. We sure did. Okay. I don't like giving you guys stuff that we haven't seen. For instance, the Hall effect you guys did see. Okay. So, um... Okay. All right. So since we've already seen all of those things, then um, then it makes this pretty easy. Um, I can start talking about the force equal to the length. times the current, times the B field, times the sine of the angle. Okay, good. Then let's get back to that. Um, that's fine. It also stems, this ILB sine theta stems also from the fact that um, Q, V, V sine theta. Um, we could say this is our length. All right. So, um, cool. Uh, these two things are equivalent, and I'll show you why. Um, let's start with Q, V, B, sine theta. So um, th 
velocity is length divided by time. Divided by time. And we're going to multiply that by our B field times the sine of theta. These two things, these are constant. Um, the length is constant. The Q is constant. All those stuff, all these things are constant. However, um, if we divide Q by time, why is that T so messed up? If we divide Q by time, then we end up with a current. So that's where um, QVB sine theta equals um, ILB sine theta. All right, which is, I just wrote down. And both of those are the forces that we would have due to uh, those, um, due to the system, the way that it is. So if, um, let's see which way the forces are going. And we're gonna look at just one current in particular. We're gonna look at this current and this current, and what does it do um, for this object sliding into and out of the B field? So what is the force on that plate due to these things? Okay, so here's, here's how it works. If you have your current going in this direction, and you have your B field, let's make it blue, going in this direction. Then you do the right hand rule and you lay your fingers fingers along the current, curve, them toward the B field which should be at 90 degrees to it your thumb thumb points in the direction of the force. So I have my fingers going up the page. I bend them into the page. My thumb points this direction, and that is the direction of the force, okay? It's the only way um, the direction of force. That's the only way to get your... Um, direction of the force that's happening, all right? So we've got current, all right? The current is going um, uh, down as we exit or enter. Um, should we do the enter entry side first? We did the entry side first before. So I guess we should do that. Um, as we're going in, our current is going down. We're going in, and our B field, the B field that we're dealing with is into the page. It's this B field that we want to work with, okay? So we're dealing with that B field. Our current cross that B field. So we're gonna put our fingers along the current. We're gonna bend them toward the B field. And our thumb is gonna point in the direction of the force. So I'm gonna draw our current. Our current is going down. I'm gonna draw our B field. Our B field is going into the page. Now I'm gonna do the right hand rule and my force is going to go like this. Okay, 
So what do you know? The force and the vector that is moving us into that with the, this is where our kinetic energy comes from, right? Because our kinetic energy is equal to one half our mass of this plate times VA squared. So that's our kinetic energy. But the force is opposing that movement, right? It's trying to slow that movement down. What is that going to do? That's going to reduce. So we'll have VA initial, and it's going to get moved uh, to a VA final where VA, VA final is less than VA initial, right? So our force is going in this direction. Okay, so fine. Our initial force is going in that direction. Let's continue. And let's look at what happens when we start to leave the page or the magnetic field region. So let's draw our magnetic field region. We can do something like this. They're going into the page. And now here's our plate. And it's leaving the page. <clears throat> with some V area, who knows, who knows what it is. We already decided that the current is going to be going down on this side. So our down current, so we can draw then, what does that do for us? We have a down current, we've got a delete that. We've got our B field doing this. And um, we do the same thing. And our force, I keep not changing colors like I want to. Our force then is also again opposing our movement. Okay, so um, that's it. This is a force of friction. It's very, very similar to drag or any other um, frictional type forces. Okay, this is just frictional force that comes about as a result of uh, the electromagnetic fields and what they do. Okay, I think that pretty much nails it down. Um, now, what we could do is we could cut holes out of our plate. So we can do something like this and cut holes out of the plate. And then our current, this is uh, figure uh, 2315. Our current then is limited to the size of the loops that can happen, right? Only little loops, these little loops can occur. So cutting holes um, only allows small loops to happen and eventually if we were to just have nothing but a wire loop going through the system, we could have just this wire loop and um, that would be a, a minimization of the forces that we're talking about because there isn't, um, there's only current on the outside, there's zero current happening inside. So that zero current doesn't have a chance to interact with the B field like a plate would. 
So up here where we're looking at the entire plate going in and out, there are all of these little currents, all these little currents that are happening inside this plate at all times. And uh, as it's going in and out, I shouldn't put it in the middle like this, but as it's going in and out, these currents happen, okay? These eddy currents will occur and uh, mess us up, slow us down, cause friction. So let's move up. These smaller eddies aren't able to take away as much energy from the system. So as the loops get smaller and smaller, they aren't able to take energy away from the system as much, the little um, eddy currents that happen. Then we're left with just one big, huge eddy current that is the only thing available. That's it. Everything else is um, has been removed. So this is the next step. Uh, the force that opposes the movement is greater for a whole sheet, right, of plate than it is when you start to remove these sections. So, okay, so force magnitude. All right, this is a motional force, a damping force for the plate. If you see the solid plate, that's the maximum force magnitude. As we cut more and more out of the plate, force is less than force max. So we cut more and more out. Until finally we have nothing left but the wire on the edge. And that would be force three is less than force two. So the dampening force here is max. This one's going to be less. This one's going to be even less. And then this one would be the least that you could have. So if it's a thin conducting wire, which is this situation, um, then our friction is the least. And we're left again with our force equals our current and we say cross, okay? This is a cross product. Um, all the cross product means is that we're maintaining a vector, right? It's, it's a vector from two vectors. But if we were to take the absolute value of each of those things, so we no longer have vectors anymore. We are taking the absolute value of them. We'd be multiplying that by the sine of the angle between them. And that's going to give us, well, it wouldn't give us a force vector. It would give us just a force. Um, and then we'd figure out what the, what the direction of that force was if we needed to know the vector. 
Okay. Okay, so <laughs> what is it that we're really talking about again? We're talking about current flowing in a wire. The current goes in, let's say, this direction around the wire. There's a magnetic field that it happens to be in. We'll say it's into the page. And if we're only dealing with one of these current vectors, uh, you know what? Let's talk about this. Um, let's talk about this. So here's the region. of our magnetic field into the page. And let's see, if that current is going up, then the velocity has to be going, um, if it's going that direction, going up, the force has to be opposing, so that means that our velocity is going into the page. So the velocity of our area is going into the page, or uh, to the right. Okay, so it's moving to the right, this thing. Now, um, there's a certain current that we want to work with. Now, what about working with this current? Because these two currents are also inside this region, right? So if we take this current and do a right-hand rule with this, um, we'll notice that our force is going up on the bottom side. That's our force vector. On the top side, our force is going down. And those two forces oppose each other perfectly because the current is the same, the B field is the same. So everything is the same. So those two forces balance out and we're only left with this force right here, um, the force that is generated from this guy. And then that force, if we do uh, I cross B, we notice that that is a frictional force slowing us down, all right? This current isn't even in the, in the circle yet. It isn't in the region yet. So we only, had, we only had this section of current, this section of current, which opposed the for, two forces opposed each other, so they balanced. And then we have this current that actually is the current that's going to slow us down. So, I think that is worth uh, looking at. Um, so, let's, um, uh, let's kind of summarize. Uh, I think uh, I want to summarize this whole thing so that it's kind of nice and neat. So, once you've drawn it one way, or, you know, two different ways, um, then you kind of have it. So let's say our B field is like this. Our velocity for our loop is going like this. Um, we've got our loop here. Let's put some current on it. Current I. Okay, so here's our velocity and our uh, force of friction is in this direction. Okay, so that's one scenario. And our second scenario 
Let's do it again, only this time. We're gonna have the current going in this direction. Our velocity is gonna go in this direction. And our B field is still gonna point into the page. What is the direction of our force? Our force has to be going in this direction. Okay, so we've done both, going into and out of the region with our area. Okay, so motional EMF, all right, is being generated. That motional EMF causes a eddy currents. The eddy currents cause frictional forces. Okay. Maybe I should write that out. Let's write that out. So we have a region. of B field to a plate enters and exits the region three. Currents uh, form, and by that we mean eddy currents. Currents form, and those currents um, are generated from the motional EMF. And so for, um, they're generated from the motional EMF. Okay, currents form. Um, because of those currents, we get a force because the force is equal to I L B sine theta. And we use the right-hand rule to figure out the direction. That force is a frictional force. So our frictional force uh, direction um, Uh, comes from the right-hand rule. In fact, let's remove right-hand rule from here. This gives us the magnitude. This gives us the magnitude, and the force direction comes from the right-hand rule. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the, that's the steps that happens. So this damping has many uses. There are many, many uses for this damping. Um, I don't list any of those uses, but one of them is figuring out the difference between materials that are conducting and materials that are not conducting. So um, you can have a magnetic field and if you do, um, you'll be able to sort out uh, trash by conducting things versus non-conducting things. In other words, anything that's metal that goes through this magnetic field um, will have a dampening uh, force, this force of friction, and that allows a person to 
figure out uh, what that is, and then remove those materials from the from the other materials. Right? You can separate out uh, trash uh, metals from from mattresses and that kind of stuff, um, or paper or whatever. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, how do I want to do this? Uh, let's put force, um, no, I don't want to do force first. Let's talk about the velocity of the plate. Let's talk about the change in EMF. Uh, by way of, here's the EMF, here's the, the uh, magnetic flux change, here's our current, and here's, let's do the force last. So, um, if the velocity goes up, the flux goes up, that means the EMF goes up, the current goes up, and the force goes up. If the velocity goes down, the, EM, uh, the flux change goes down, the EMF then goes down, the current goes down, and the force declines. Okay? So... Eventually, this force is causing the velocity to go to zero, which means this guy's going to be zero, this guy's going to be zero, this guy's going to be zero. And um, when you're sitting still, there's no frictional forces anymore. So what, what I'm saying is this system... The force of friction is driving the system to equilibrium. Um, in our case, not just V equals a constant, okay? It's taking V equals a constant, and it's, it's saying, you know what? Forget that. Not good enough. I want V to go to zero, okay? So it's going to push it all the way so that V goes to zero, which means our kinetic energy is driven to zero as well. Okay? All right. Uh... So there are some examples of things that use this. Uh, I already gave you one, the waste sorting. So waste sorting or trash sorting. Okay, and then we have um, balances or scales. When you measure uh, m uh, mass scales, used to measure mass, and then three, we have. Metal detectors. Oh, sorry about that. Everybody goes, hey, wait, what are you doing? Metal detectors. You guys have all seen the metal detector at the bottom. Someone's sending a current through there. And when an item goes into that region when it's a metallic item then 
um, the B field inside there changes, just like we talked about. And now all those changes get noticed and um, your, your uh, device goes from zero, it goes like and starts to beep at you, right? Because you just detected something that's metal under there. In fact, you found a gold doubloon. It was gold and it's a little money thing and you're like, heck yeah, rich now. All right, so let's, uh, let's finish there. Um, we can talk about 23.5 uh, in class tomorrow.